Uh, so this afternoon we will be discussing on introduction to LLMs. Can you see my screen? All right, thank you. Uh, so before we uh, jump into the uh, tutorial, uh, I just want you to ask questions and be interactive, right? Uh, it's not too technical, uh, so you will understand most of the contents, but when you have any doubts or any questions, uh, please ask. All right, so today we will be uh, uh, discussing about LLMs, uh, what's uh, a large language model, and how does this model works. And we will also see some popular LLMs. And then um, how can we choose the right LLM for our needs? And finally, we will see uh, some of the limitations of uh, LLMs. So large language models, um, it's an advanced type of uh, a language model that's trained using uh, deep learning techniques on a large amount of text data. Uh, this, when we say large or massive, it's uh, a data up to uh, petabytes. And also they, they use large number of parameters in millions and billions of parameters to train the, the models. So those models are capable of uh, generating human-like text uh, and also perform NLP tasks such as text summarization, right? Uh, so what, what, what's what's it's different uh, or uh, is, it, why is it different from uh, large, uh, I mean, language models, right? So in large mo uh, in language models, uh, the algorithms usually, or the, the machine learning algorithms usually uh, assign probabilities to a sequence of words based on the analysis of the uh, text corpus, right? Uh, for example, if I say that the sky is dash, uh, we humans easily understand or uh, feel that that, that uh, text or that word, uh, but how, I mean, the, the large language models or the language model uh, in general uh, approach it using uh, mathematical probabilities. Uh, it will calculate the uh, probability of the next word given the, the, the previous word. So we need to uh, a little bit understand more on uh, language models in order to fully understand LLMs. Uh, so the, the, la la the language model can be uh, from n-gram models, from the simplest to the more complex ones, uh, which based on uh, neural network models. Uh, that's what the LLMs usually use. Uh, but the, the architecture for the neural network uh, for LLMs is different. Uh, in normal machine learning algorithms, uh, there are different neural networks like uh, RNN, uh, recurrent neural network, or CNN, convolutional neural network. So depending on the uh, task that we want to perform, there are different uh, neural networks and the architecture also depends on the uh, however, the, the large language models usually refers to models that use uh, the deep learning techniques and they have large number of parameters and also a large number of uh, data. So they are called large because of the, the parameters uh, we use to train the uh, language model and also uh, the, the, the amount of data that we use to train the uh, LLMs. 
So, uh, as I said earlier, the LLMs use um, millions and billions of parameters to tr train the, the models. And also, uh, they use a large data set that is up to giga to petabytes. So this, these models or the LLMs can capture uh, complex patterns in language uh, and produce texts that's often indistinguishable from uh, uh, texts written by humans. So they are very powerful and they can be used for uh, different tasks. Uh, they can be uh, fine-tuned or we can use prompt engineering to uh, direct them into uh, performing a specific uh, task. So are there any questions or concepts that are not clear? This is not that technical, right? We just need to understand the definitions and uh, how it's different from um, the language models that we have been using the machine learning or yeah the the deep learning uh, techniques uh, we we can go deeper but uh, it's not uh, the objective of this presentation uh, because this the, the neural networks uh, will have what we call it transformers which is an an architecture designed for uh, llms any questions before we move on that I need to clarify? Or, all right. So let's move on to the next section. Um, so how do large language models work? We can, as I said earlier, we can't go deeper and uh, understand uh, every bit of uh, concept in LLMs because they are complicated and they need more advanced uh, uh, more advanced knowledge uh, and also machine learning algorithms etc so in general uh, LLMs like uh, GPT uh, generative pre-trained transformer works based on a transformer architecture uh, this is one type of a neural network architecture that was developed for uh, LLMs. Uh, it was developed in uh, 2017 uh, with a paper, what you call it, what you need is uh, attention. You can check that on. Uh, so simply when we explain how they works, they basically starts from uh, learning from texts, they will learn from lots of texts, or we give them uh, lots of text data. And then using those uh, transformer architectures, uh, there are things that uh, going on inside, like tokenization, embedding, etc. Uh, and then there is what we call it breaking down the words. Uh, instead of uh, understanding a statement or a sentence, the LLMs will first understand the small piece of words uh, in a given sentence. So they will understand the relation or the similarity between uh, words in a sentence, and those will be uh, kind of vectorized. They will change it into a vector uh, so that the machine can work uh, easily on them. And then when we uh, ask or prompt something, they, they will compare the, the semantic similarity between the words and they will uh, generate or return uh, the, the answer. Um, so we, they, they can be uh, specialized uh, in different ways. Uh, the, the first one is fine tuning. Since they are general, uh, we can make them specific to perform uh, a specific task. And to do that, uh, uh, we need to do 
uh, fine tuning, uh, which means uh, we need to um, train them with a specific data set for that specific uh, task. Uh, in that case, we, are, we, we will be reducing the number of parameters and there will be more attention or focused on that specific task or specific uh, data. And yeah, so by performing uh, prompt engineering or prompt design, we can also guide them uh, to be specific so that they can do tasks uh, that we want to uh, do. So this is how they works, but this is a, a non-technical explanation for uh, LLMs, how they work. But if we go deeper, um, I recommend you to read upon the transformer architectures, uh, the encoding, decoding, uh those concepts are uh, very important to understand how the LLMs work all right uh the the next one is some popular LLMs uh, we will list some of them there are a lot of them um having those uh, LLMs how can we uh, choose one for our need that we're going to discuss later. So uh, we have different uh, LLMs. The first one the, is the GPT, uh, specifically GPT-3. Uh, there is now GPT-4, et cetera. Uh, so this is one of the largest uh, large language model developed by OpenAI. Uh, sorry. And it has 175 billion parameters and can perform many tasks, including text generation, translation, and summarization. Um, I think most of you know uh, ChatGTP. So ChatGTP is basically um, uh, a web app, uh, which is fine-tuned for uh, chat. Uh, using the, the base model or the GPT model, you can uh, develop a web application for a chat. Uh, so it, it, it has uh, 75 billion parameters. And there is also GPT-4, um, that's a paid version. Uh, we have GPT-3.5 that currently are, we are using, right? Uh, and there's also, what you call it, BERT from Google, uh, bi-directional encoder representation from uh, transformers. Uh, it's another popular LLM that has been trained on massive corpus of text data. Uh, it can understand the textual of sentences and generate meaningful uh, responses uh, to your questions. Uh, and the uh, LAMA model, uh, it's from uh, Meta or Facebook, that's large language model uh, Meta AI. Uh, currently, they I think they released Lama 3 um, on last Tuesday or Wednesday. Lama 3 is out. Uh, but Lama 2 is a pre trained generative text model uh, with 7 to 70 billion parameters. And it has been fine-tuned with uh, RLHF, that's Refor Reinforcement Learning from uh, Human Feedbacks. Uh, that's to make it uh, more uh, accurate and uh, non-biased, like I can say. Uh, so it's a text generation model that can be used as a chatbot and can be adopted for a variety of uh, NLP tasks, including programming tasks. So Meta has already launched two open customized versions of uh, Llama 2, the Llama Chat and uh, Code Llama. So they are fine-tuned uh, to uh, for uh, a chat and for uh, code writing, for programming. 
Um, the other one is Bloom. Uh, this one is um, a collaborative work between uh, different researchers from different countries and from uh, a hugging face. It's a by science, large open science, open source, multilingual, uh, large, I mean, language model. Um, it is capable of understanding multiple languages. Uh, it has um, 176 billion parameters and it's one of the most powerful open source LLMs uh, that provide coherent and accurate texts in 46 languages and 13 programming languages. It can handle or it, it can accurately uh, generate uh, texts in 46 languages. And it can also understand uh, certain programming languages. You can read the details uh, on that. And I, I, I think since it's a, a collaboration between uh, different researchers uh, from different uh, countries, its transparency is the backbone of Bloom. It's a, pro a project where everyone can access the source code and the training data in order to run, study, and improve it. Um, when, when we say training, uh, this is not uh, an easy task or it can't be done on a, a simple laptop. It needs um, a computational power uh, and there are also, and it's also very expensive to train LLMs uh, or develop a custom uh, large language model. Uh, this plume can be used for freely through the hiking fix uh, ecosystem. If we can be uh, technical, what we will do is we will look for um, the Bloom model from the hiking face uh, website. It's an ecosystem for mainly uh, large language models. You can then uh, create uh, an account there and then you will have a hugging face uh, API key and using that you can uh, run it uh, locally using that open AI key. Uh, that's a bit uh, technical too. Uh, if you have any questions we can we can you can raise them. Um, yeah so these are the uh, the four. <laughs> there are a lot of them uh, Mistral, Falcon, there are a lot of LLMs out there. Uh, you have to, uh, did someone raise his hand? Uh, you can ask. Can I access Bloom from my laptop? Uh, directly, it might be, uh, it, it might need some resources, uh, but using uh, the Hugging Face API key, you can run the models on your local machine uh, or using Google Colab. Sometimes they, they need a GPU to run. Yeah, so it, yeah, it depends. You have to search on that. Okay. Any other question? Uh, is it clear? Please ask. Yeah. Is it clear? Can we move on? Hello? All right, thank you. Uh, are, are we going to be using a particular LLM in this training, or we are just meant to know that there are a lot of them that existed? Uh, for, for your project, uh, I don't think you are going to uh, load, run the models or fine tune. No, you are not going to do that. Uh, in your uh, project, what you do is you will look for uh, a particular LLM, uh, usually a chat boot or a chat, a web app like the uh, chat GTP or uh, Copilot. I, I will show you the uh, those on. Uh, 
Copilot, ChatGTP, Gemini. We, we will experiment on that. Uh, so you are you are going to use those uh, to get uh, your data, and also you can ask for analysis stuff like that. Uh, you are not going to uh, fine tune or run the models locally. Uh, it's not scope of that uh, for this project. Is that clear? Yes, but we were just asking for research purposes. Yes, yes. Any other question? All right. Uh, if to Sra, go ahead. Yes. Uh, so uh, we can't use the bloom for the time being. Uh, no, these are what we call them the, the, the base models. Uh, you see, uh, this particular, uh, I said GPT-3, uh, because we are using GPT-3.5 for chat GTP. But those uh, BERT, uh, GPT, uh, LAMA, those are base models, right? The, the pre-trained models uh, that you can fine tune to uh, to do a particular uh, task. For example, chat GTP is fine-tuned for a chat from the uh, base model, that's GPT uh, model. So th these are the base models. So they are... Uh, so they are not definitely interactive with the... Um... That's we, we are not directly working on the LAMA model. Right? Uh, what we we'll do is we will look for a web application that's based on LAMA. If uh, you are choosing LAMA to be your LLM, right? For example, for a text generation, if you want to uh, summarize a text or rewrite a text, what we will do, we will go to ChatGTP, right? It's a web app which is fine tuned for chat from the uh, GPT models, right? So we are not directly going to use uh, a Bloom or BERT or LAMA. Rather, we will look for the fine-tuned models for a particular task, like the Copilot, like the ChatGTP, uh, like the Gemini. These are what you are going to use. Um, other questions? What's the difference between GPT 3.4 and 4? Oh, uh, th th these are generations of GPT. Uh, GPT 3 might be trained with like uh, 176 billion parameters, right? So to increase its efficiency and its accuracy, uh, they will add more parameters and more data, and they will call it uh, GPT 4. So GPT-4 is more accurate than uh, GPT-3.5 or uh, GPT-3 in general. So the, the, at different times, they will re release different versions of uh, their model. So the difference between uh, GPT-3 and GPT-4 is uh, it's trained with uh, more parameters and also with more data. And it's more efficient I mean, uh, more accurate uh, than the the, pre the 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 previous ones. I hope that's clear. Do they upload files from Google Sheet and analyze them? Um, I don't think that can be done on GPT. Maybe Copilot will do. You have to you have to search for that. And Shatu, uh, oh, you were explaining. Yeah, that that's correct. Uh, GPT has a problem of giving false references to write up 
Uh, okay, we, we will come to that. Uh, uh, so these are pre-trained uh, models, which means they have been trained, for example, um, GPT 3.5, was trained on data before 2022, right? Which means it doesn't have the knowledge after uh, 2022, which means if you are asking it uh, about something after 2022, it will not know, right? Uh, and they are not good for giving references. They are just for... Um, they they are they are good in uh, natural language processing so they 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 will not give you a, a a reference if they are not trained on so yeah chat gtp might not give you a recent reference on something or um it might not give you the the right reference and that means uh, it's hallucinating the uh, question that you are you asked uh, the chat GPT uh, may not be in a good way. Your prompt might need more uh, clarification to get uh, a right reference. But I don't advise you to ask references uh, from uh, chat GPT. Yeah. Uh, is that clear? Hola, Joe? Hola, Phil? Yes, it is. All it's right. Good. Thank you. Good. Any other questions before we move on? All right. Um, so the, the question is, we have these uh, different LLMs. The, the question is, how do we choose uh, the right LLM for our needs, for our task, right? So the, the, you, need to, you, you need to answer these questions. What do you want to do? That, that's the, the first question you need to ask. Uh, if it is a text summarization, you might use ChatGTP, right? But if you want to, uh, uh, let's say, generate image, you might use a different LLM, uh, which is not uh, related to language model. Uh, that would be um, like DALE. Uh, there are other models for image generation that, that will be related to generative AI. Uh, and why do you need the LLM? You, you need to ask that also. And how much accuracy do you need? Because the, the different models will have uh, different accuracies for different tasks. Uh, for example, uh, Copilot might be good in giving you uh, a Python code than ChatGTP. Uh, so you need to assess how accurate do you want your uh task and the other is how much do you want to uh, do you want to invest uh this is because um most of the open source uh llms might not perform uh as good as uh open ai llm or gpt models right in that case you might pay uh, because uh the gpt models are not open uh, for example we can't have access for gpt4 yet right so you you, you need to uh answer that also uh, can you achieve your goals with a pre-trained model uh, that means uh, that the, the base models if if that's the case you can use them otherwise you might need to fine tune them you might need to train those models for uh, your specific data set. So uh, answering these questions will help you to choose uh, the uh, LLM. The LLM. But obviously, if 
we can't find an open source LLM for your task, you might uh, consider paying to OpenAI. Is that clear? Um, and the last one is limitations and challenges of LLMs. Uh, the first one is hallucination, as I said earlier. Uh, this happens when LLMs produce an output that's false, totally false, or that doesn't match the user's uh, intent. Uh, this is called hallucination. So how do we uh, alleviate that problem? Um, as I said earlier, it might be prompt engineering, uh, like designing your prompt in such a way that uh, it's clear and understandable for the LLM. Uh, that would help to alleviate hallucination. Uh, and also, uh, d d different, mainly it's uh, prompt engineering, uh, maybe fine tuning, etc. Uh, the other one is security. Uh, they have security issue. I mean, um, they, this can be um, uh, pre trained and not pre trained, fine tuned so that someone can do something else, which is which will um, hurt someone. Uh, so they, they, they present important security, security risks when they are not managed or surveyed properly. Someone might uh, use a GPT model for a different purpose, uh, especially the open source ones. Since you can train them with your own data, uh, you can uh, train them for a different purpose, which is which is illegal or something different. I hope you understand that. Uh, the other one is bias. Uh, the data used to train the language models will affect the outputs, uh, right? So if you give it um, some specific set of data, it might be biased for uh, generalizing something. Uh, for example, if data represents a single demographic or lacks diversity, then the output produced by the LLM will also lack diversity, right? So uh, they, they are usually biased, uh, not usually, depending on the data they are trained on. Uh, the other one is scalability. It can be difficult and time and resource consuming to scale and maintain LLMs. Uh, yeah, as I said, uh, if you want to perform a specific task or if you want to incorporate um, uh, AI uh, or generative AI apps or uh, something you want to automate using LLMs for your company, uh, that might be uh, difficult and it takes time and also resources. So uh, scalability is also a problem. And the other one is uh, deployment. Once you have uh, an LLM up, uh, that might be a chat put uh, for your documents. Uh, once you have that, uh, you if you want to deploy it somewhere in the cloud or, uh, yeah, so that, that, that would require a deeper understanding of the transform mod, uh, transformer models, uh, distributed software and hardware, and all of our technical experts is needed for deploying the LLA maps. Uh, I, I believe Google uh, and also other companies are abstracting those uh, uh, steps, but still, if you are uh, developing a LLA map and wants to deploy, uh, you need to re you need to understand the the whole uh, LLA. That means including the the uh, neural networks, the transformers, the tokenization, embedding, etc. There are a lot of uh, concepts that you need to understand. Yeah, that's that's all I have.
uh, and thank you. But we are not yet done. We will. Uh, uh, is, is there any question? Or is it clear? Okay. Um, let's just have a look at the challenge. Um, I think, where is it? Uh, this one. So um, you are asked to uh, get uh, data for the, I think the seven companies, follow this link and blah, blah, blah. Uh, that, that's for the co-pilot. Uh, if you want to generate uh, your data, uh, what you do is just copy this one and then go to, this is the co-pilot, right? Uh, you need to add the, the extension and sign up with um, uh, Microsoft uh, account and you paste that and you change the the company name uh, for example apple right give me a table with cash on hand for apple um this might be okay let, let's run it and see uh, we will tweak it a bit um so if i do this I hope it will generate what we are looking for. Okay, so certainly the table, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's for each year, right? Uh, but is that really what you need? Uh, or can you add more data um, that you need to explore depending on what you want to do, right? Uh, if you're going to uh, perform maybe the uh, something related to the KPIs, are this data um, enough? So uh, you, can, you can download the Excel or whatever you want, but if you need more data, you have to be more uh, explicit and uh, expressible, right? So give me a table with a cash on hand for Apple, uh, from 2018 up to uh, 2023 on quarterly base or monthly, right? I, I want the monthly data instead of year-to-year uh, -year data. Uh, if I do that, it will give me on, I, I hope so, on monthly basis. Uh, that's like quarterly. Maybe the reports, it looks like that's the third. Yeah, that's quarterly. So it says certainly blah, 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 right? So yeah, so doing your, what you call it, prompt engineering, uh, you can get the, the data. So if I, change this to, um, I don't know, uh, why is it not editing? Oh, for Meta or Facebook. Uh, this also, again, So now what we can do is, can we get the same result if we ask chat GTP, chat GPT? Uh, do I have? Oh, this is Gemini. Let me ask it. Unfortunately, public related companies like Meta are not required to report their, you see, for getting this kind of uh, data, the Gemini restricted or couldn't get the, the data because of uh, some restriction. Uh, but Copilot gave us the data and we can also try ChatGPT. Uh, 
I can't provide real-time financial data, including monthly cash. But I didn't ask. This is this is it's some kind of hallucination, right? It says can't provide real-time financial data. It's not real-time. Uh, I didn't ask for the current, uh, including monthly cash, blah, blah. However, I can outline a hypothetical table uh, structure and discuss how might find blah, blah. Yeah. So the, the only way that you can get the, the data is from Copilot. Um, is there any questions? Uh, where is the, oh. Uh, give us some insight on how the assignment or the company information is one one table in standard format and ensuring they have conversed and rebellions. Uh, oh, uh, you, you need to do some pre-processing. Uh, where is the challenge? Uh, so this, as you can see, the data, uh, it says in millions of USD, right? Uh, which means when you take this Excel, uh, first you need to remove the, the dollar side, right? And also you have to multiply these numbers by millions. This is like 43,956 million. This is what it means. It's in millions, so you have to multiply each row with uh, a million, and that can be easily done on uh, Excel, right? Uh, what is this? I don't want to sign in. Uh, It says exporting. Let's just. Oh, it wants me to sign in. I don't remember which one I used. Uh, format view needs not exported. Uh, let me just WPS. All right. So this is the data that we have, right? Uh, let me just go. Uh, so I think you, you need to select and format the data somehow. And uh, th there should be a way to remove this. Uh, yeah. And then once you remove that, you can multiply it um, by a thousand, I mean, by a million. That will uh, standardize the, the data. And what was the other question? Three layers, consequently, it depends. If it's in three layers, you have to multiply uh, each row by three layer. Uh, it means we need to convert it millions, billions, and trillions consistently. Yes, yes, you have to do that. Um, any other question? Are there any questions? Convert it into millions. Uh, let me just. I have this data, right? 
So what I will do is I will select this. Uh, no, uh, maybe uh, it, it's different. Um, okay, the easiest way is uh, uh, what I will do is equals right and then this is d what this is d9 multiplied by a thousand uh for example right so if i do that well why is it six uh D, oh, D9 is this value, right? Yeah. So, sorry, I was supposed to say D5. Uh, D5. Uh, okay, Let, let's change it. Uh, equals, whoa. It was two, right? So I can, no, I don't need to create a different one. Uh, current value times, uh, okay, equals to no. Uh, that's D5. Uh, it it will remove that. No. Uh, uh, this one. Uh, it will remove accounting formulas. Maybe I don't know. Oh, this one you can remove it from here. Uh, yeah, the, the, there is the, there must be a, a direct way. But what I can do is, I will say equals uh, d five times uh, uh, a thousand, right? If I do that, it will give me that. But if I drag this, will I have, no. Yeah, it's calculating, yeah. You can create a, a different column and you calculate for the first one and then you drag them. But there, there should be a, a, a way. Um, Format insert, no. No. Yeah, you can calculate for one of them and then you can drag them out. Any other question? Hello? Uh, is it clear? Yeah, yeah. Okay then. All right. Um, have a good afternoon. And enjoy. Uh, if the original data is in millions, we need to convert in millions. If the original data is in billions, yes, that's that's it. Um, uh, oh, I think he's explaining. Uh, Abdulaziz, Abdulaziz, you can you can raise your hand. I mean, you can ask your question. It's clear. I'm explaining that. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you.
All right. Bye.